In 2014, President Huru Kenyatta launched the National Soil Report on Fertility to inform a policy that will correct deterioration of the country's soil. However, five years later, much has not been done to correct the situation even as production dwindles, posing a major food security challenge for the growing population. At the moment, Kenya soils are in the intensive care unit, and urgent action is needed to breathe new life into the seriously malnourished earth. According to the One Acre Fund, degraded soils that have lost their fertility are casually linked to the chronic poverty in Kenya, fertile and healthy soils, in particular soils, that are rich in organic matter are a critical resource bank providing water and nutrient retention, resilient to drought, high crop yield potential, and other adaptive services. In recognition of the importance of health soils, One Acre Fund are providing training to their farmers in Western Kenya on integrated soil fertility management and where they provide products that build long-term soil health. We are here to do some soil testing, sampling for the farmer's soil uh, because uh, we have realized that uh, most of these uh, farmers within the uh, western region of Kenya uh, do not have uh, the, uh, any records about their soils. So we are here to do some soil uh, sampling procedures uh, to take the samples to the laboratory for uh, analysis. According to Crispina Shivachi, a soil analyst at the One Acre Fund, soil acidity is important for several reasons. Firstly, at low pH, nutrient abundant in the soil is important, while low nutrients result in plant nutrient deficiency and poor yields. Secondly, low pH makes fertilizer less efficient, meaning more fertilizer is needed to achieve the same level of harvest. And finally, some element in the soil, like aluminum, can become toxic at low pH level. Before we come to uh, any farmer's uh, uh, farm, uh, first of all we have to inform the farmer that uh, we are making a visit to the farm uh, because soil testing or uh, uh, sampling uh, requires that uh, farmer presence should be uh, there. So basically we, we do soil testing when the farmer is around uh, because the farmer knows well his farm and we can uh, uh, easily identify the problem uh, from the field when the farmer says that uh, uh, this particular soil is not producing uh, much crops or I'm experiencing this uh, difficulty in my field. So basically we require the farmer's presence to advise us on uh, where to take the samples. Alinipata kwa shamba, hata na shukuru kuja kwao kwa sababu hii shamba yangu hijaifanywa any test ya mchanga lakini walikuja na good idea wakaniambia wanataka kunifanyia test ndio nijue exactly ni mbegu gani na mbolea gani ninaweza tumia kwa sababu sometimes huwa napanda unapata mahindi imerefuka masaidi ingine kwingine kumefupika sasa unachukua mbegu yenye huelewi lakini at least vile wamekuja leo wameniambia wameenda kupima hiyo mbegu at least next year kutakuwa na improvement ya Yaani wameenda kupima hiyo mchanga, waniletea results. Waniambie ni mbegu gani, ni mbolea gani, ama mchanga ina lack nini, kama kuna kitu ya kuongezea, niongezee. Sasa nimeshukuru sana. While One Acre Fund is currently combating soil acidification and recommending practices like fertilizer micro dosing and compost use, trials indicate that agricultural lime may be a promising method for managing soil acidity. Sasa vile wamekuja waliniambia lengo lao ilikuwa ni ku, kwenda kupima hiyo mchanga. Sasa wakisha leta results I think wataongezea vile nitailinda. But huko nyuma eka fandua wanatuambia vile tutachunga mchanga. Yaani kuimprove hiyo mchanga. Wanatuambia tunatengeneza compost manure tunaweka ndani. Wanatuambia tunanunua lime inasaidia. Alafu pia kuna miti za kulvera wametupea, tunapanda. Tuambia wa matawi yake, pia ni mbolea. Sasa hiyo matawi wa tunakusanya, pia tuneka kwa shamba. Yani isaidie kuimbrovio mchanga. 
Um, so basically we're here to visit Beatrice who is one of our farmers and um, one of the things that Waneka Fund we do is we offer trainings, these are quality trainings on how to plant. So we do provide our farmers with planting materials and this includes a planting stick, um, a planting rope and a scoop. So basically what happens is farmers are able to know how they're supposed to plant and the measurement. So in a planting string um, there's um, a measurement of 25 centimeters. So between one hole and the other is 25 centimeters and then between one line to the other is 75 centimeters. So a farmer will use the planting strings to measure their holes and then the planting a stick will measure between one line to the other which is 75 centimeters. So when a farmer is planting they're able to know uh, the distance between one hole and the other. So what they do is they will dig a hole and then they will put in the fertilizer and then they will cover it a bit with a bit of soil and then they'll put in the, the seed and then they will cover it. So the, um, a maize is able to absorb the fertilizer and then they're able to get a quality f um, harvest from what they've planted. So we provide uh, trainings and, and so farmers are able to know how they're supposed to plant their maize. The problem of deteriorating soil fertility is gross because most farmers do not know the status of their soils since they don't test due to costs. A sample of soil tests at the National Laboratory goes for 1,500 shillings, but a farmer requires about three samples for different points of the farm. Agricultural officers encourage farmers to conduct soil tests to know status of their farms. However, this might not be practical because of the high cost, adding to the cost of production. When we first of all, when we visit the farm, uh, we visualize the farm. Uh, we see how the farm, the landscape is. The, that is called topography. How the field is. Uh, then uh, we have uh, our standardized uh, way of, uh, of uh, doing uh, soil sampling. That's uh, we use the Y pattern. A uh, Y pattern means uh, you look at the farm, then on the broad side of the farm, you draw a Y, yeah, the capital Y, then uh, you pick samples. Now you measure a few meters from the edges, then uh, you make sure that the, where you have placed the Y is away from any farm, uh, manure, compost, uh, the edge, the trees, just in the middle of the farm. You draw your Y, you pick four spots of the Y, uh, from each angle of the Y, pick one sample, one sample, and then the middle of the Y, you pick another sample, then on the long side of the Y, you take another sample. So you have four spots at that uh, particular farm. And uh, basically when you go to the field, you see when the farms, because of their soil uh, uh, profile, uh, because soils are being made of uh, different layers, the topsoil, subsoil, so first of all you, you have to scoop off, uh, remove the topsoil, then you dig uh, 15 centimeter deep using our scoop. This is the scoop that we use to uh, collect the soil samples. Uh, then you, after taking the uh, spot spots, you place the samples in a bucket, then you thoroughly mix the samples using your hand, then uh, you have a, a PVC sheet, that's a polyvinyl uh, chloride sheet, where the plastic sheet where you place your samples there then again you mix it thoroughly with the hands uh, making it like a cone shape then you flatten it then we have a procedure called coning and quartering whereby we divide that uh, uh, samples that you have made into like a cake shape you divide it into four quarters then you take the two adjacent quarters then you pull them together then you mix them uh, this is a procedure that avoids any biasness during mixing or se selecting the soil samples. The two quarters that you have uh, collected are the ones that you mix it again and you have a mug, you place the samples inside the mug, then you place it in the hockey bags. The hockey bags is called the sampling uh, uh, papers, whereby the samples uh, is being placed inside there, approximately of 300 grams, then you close it. Uh, then ship it immediately to the laboratory for analysis. Globally, soils are among the largest reservoirs of carbon. However, intense cultivation pressures over the last century, particularly in sub-Saharan Africa, have led to widespread soil carbon depletion. In effect, soils have been mined of their carbon, 
The widespread adoption of improved land management practices is key to restoring soil carbon throughout each season. One Acre Fund delivers field-based trainings to all its farmers on soil management techniques that can build soil carbon such as composting, residue retention or mulching, legume intercropping, crop rotation and acidity amelioration. A sloppy uh, regions where the runoff, the water runoff is very high on the sloppy regions. Uh, therefore it means most of the uh, subsoils and the topsoils are being swept away by the water. So we'll find the amount, concentration of nutrients in the flat areas being high than the ones in the sloppy areas. That's the why we prefer and advise the farmers when you go to the field as scientists, we advise the farmers that please ensure that you have some trenches on the sloppy areas to prevent the runoff. Uh, because uh, the topsoils have a lot of humus, whereby we have a lot of carbon and nitrogen in it. So they help a lot in uh, uh, giving, providing nutrients for the crops. Uh, therefore, on the sloppy areas, we have to practice uh, good farm uh, management practices. According to soil scientists at the One Acre Fund, due to climate and ecology, African soils can be relatively acidic the vast majority of smallholder farmers in East Africa cultivate acidic soils. The severity of the acidity is viable. But in Kenya, the Ministry of Agriculture estimates that around 50% of all smallholder farmers in Western Kenya may be farming soils with pH below 5.5, while optimum pH for plant growth is 6.5. Yeah, for analysis, it all depends with the weather condition, the status of the soil. Uh, because uh, when it's uh, rainy, the soils are very wet. So when we take the samples to the lab, first of all, we have to dry. We use oven drying. We oven dry the samples uh, at 40 degrees centigrade. So it depends on the amount of water content the soil has. So when the samples are taken for drying, uh, we have uh, a meter that measures and the way that we measure the water content, the soil. Uh, after drying, uh, then we start counting the number of days for analysis. Because analysis uh, it takes one day, then uh, take it for wet cam, then the results are after four, four to three, four to three, four, five days, the results will be out. In the past, farmers did not know how to plant. Um, in the African setting, farmers will just like uh, broadcast their seeds and they won't be able to know how to plant. And also the maize, um, uh, in terms of the measuring and the measuring of their fertilizer, farmers will just pl uh, uh, use fertilizer without knowing, knowing exactly how much fertilizer they're supposed to use. So a maize will, for example, use a lot of fertilizer and so they'll not be able to harvest well. So with um, our method of planting, farmers are able to know exactly what uh, fertilizer that they are supposed to use. So that's why we're using the planting scoop to know exactly how much fertilizer they're supposed to use. And so every seed is able to absorb only the fertilizer that it requires without necessarily like burning the maize or putting excess fertilizer that is not required. And so farmers are able to harvest double of what they used to harvest before they used to uh, plant to the method that would train them. It is unfortunate that close to 99% of the soils in Kenya and in tropical and sub-Saharan Africa are in one way or the other sick. They have no carbon. Soil fertility is humus. If you have no humus in the soils, even if you palm DAP and lime, that will only be a temporary remedy. wakati hui shamba yangu mchanga si mzuri hata nikipanda ifanyi vizuri kama mwaka huu hapa tu nimepatao makunia yine patala ya kupata kumina mbili nimepata kunia yine peke yake sasa utongo yangu nafikiria ni mbaya kwa sababu sijawahi kupima hakuna mtu wakunielemisha ati nipime shamba ndiyo nijua mchanga hiku hainakani leo nimeshukuru mungu kwa sababu sikuwa natarakia mkeni yeyote Alafu nimepata daktari amekuja hapa ati anapima mchanga. Nimefurahi kwa sababu amenionyesha nilime hivi. Alafu amechukua hiyo mbolea wanaita lime. Niweke hapo. Amenionyesha vile nitaweka. Alafu amenionyesha paka kukeuza ili niona angalau hii mchanga yangu itaruti vile ilikuwa zamani. 
According to the scientists, where the inorganic fertilizers have been continuously used, soils don't have enough organic matter. The result is that the topsoil is close to death. The upshot of that is unless drastic measures are taken to restore, maintain and enhance soil fertility, both in traditional and conventional agriculture, crop production can only decline. At the moment, the task of maintaining and enhancing soil health rests with the scientists since the government has no policy on soil conservation. When we receive soil samples from the field, uh, first of all, we have to verify uh, on the samples. That's called sample sorting. We sort out the samples as per the database or as per the details on the uh, package. Then, so after sorting, then we check the status of the soil sample, whether the soil sample are dry or wet. If they are wet, we have an oven. Uh, whereby we take the samples there for oven drying um, for eight hours at 40 degrees centigrade. Uh, then we check whether the samples are dry. If properly dried, then we start our soil processing stages. Mm -hmm.